All right, let's get started. Uh, this is Collecting 101. Um, we're basically going to... You know, we've some, actually uh, done Collecting 101 panels a lot. Well, shouldn't we move on to 102? Uh, maybe. I don't know. 279. Why 79? That's what I thought of. I don't know. I don't know if I'm at that level yet. <laughs> no. Um, so we're going to do, okay, Collecting 201. Isn't that just the room number or is like 101 like a beginner's course or something? Oh, let's see. I didn't go to college. <laughs> Could have fooled me. Clearly. <laughs> okay, so we'll give you all some tips and tricks and some stories and and uh, stuff on collecting. Let's um, everyone introduce themselves. You want? We'll start down here on the on the very end. All right. My name is David Sollers. Uh, that's pretty much it. Help start uh, <laughs> help start Retro Gamer Society, and I'm one of the guys throwing this soiree today. I, uh, I'm Dave Clothier. Um, I run TXRGS, uh, which is a branch of RGS. I help run all the other admins, and I help put this together. And then I also have a little uh, YouTube show that I started with this guy, which hasn't quite taken off too much, but we're working on it, called uh, Bitwar. So. Uh, hi, I'm Roger Rutowski. I'm the whole Ork Pro thing, I guess, on YouTube. I collect I guess, games. I it's fun. It's Ork Pro. Ork Pro. Ork Pro. I'm Greg, admin on Gamer Geek Nation, founder of Game Bros LLC. I'm out there, big L table. Come buy stuff. It's all good. Great values. <laughs> Uh, my name is Jay Hatfield, and this is his hetero life mate. <laughs> this is Billy. We do a show called The Game Chasers. Uh, where basically, we go around looking for retro video games, flea markets, thrift stores, people's houses. Um, your mom. Your mom and stuff like that. And uh, oh, I'm going to plug our con, if you don't mind. We started uh, Retro Palooza last year, and we're doing it again this year in September in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So... Retropalooza.net. I just do videos on YouTube. I'm pro Jared. <laughs> I just do. Yeah, yeah let's Please give it up for Jared. There we go. <laughs> okay, so how many of you guys in here collect video games? Okay, most of y'all. How many of y'all don't in here want to get started? Anyone look collecting? To begin? One guy wants to get started collecting. Okay, here's my advice for you, lone masked man in the back. Don't. It's expensive. It's frustrating. There's a ton of competition. You're three years too late. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're gonna, no one ever listens to me, so you probably will anyways. We will um, try to help you guys out. So, um, how long have you guys been collecting? Panel? Anyone? Here, go first. I mean, I guess I've probably been collecting since my uh, grandma would buy me games for Christmas every year on the NES. And uh, it just started because I kind of kept everything because I'm a pack rat. There we go. I'm, I'm not going to lie, I started out as a dirty reseller. <laughs> Filthy. I was, I was about 12 years old and I figured out I could buy video games at garage sales and trade them into other places and sell them on eBay. And uh, I, I don't know. I don't want to do the math Whoa. to figure out how long ago that was. I'm almost wait. 30 now. So wait, 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 wait. You were selling games on eBay at 12 years old. What? You're like 30 now. I, my parents had an eBay account. They let me use it. eBay's been around that long. 90. Let's see. 98 is when I started on eBay. So yeah, wow. Been around that long. I didn't realize that. That's crazy. Yep. Ryder. And what what got you into collecting too? Um. So. Pretty much, I've been collecting for a long time, but it's always been, you know, keeping those games that I always really liked. And then, uh, just actually, let's see, when was Retropalooza? That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much when, whenever I really started, um, you know, going to the garage sale. That's when the addiction started. <laughs> and it is yeah, an pretty addiction. Pretty much, yeah. Yes. Like, before it was stuff up in the garage and... You know, you bry it down, and that's pretty much how long. I started back in 96. Um, my aunt took me to a flea market 
I bought a couple of Nintendo games for a dollar or two a piece, and uh, that pretty much sparked my fire right there. Just buy as many as I could, whether it's doubles, triples, I didn't care. And then in around 2000, I started seeing how much these games were starting to go up a little bit in value, so I started selling some off, of course below their value, because that's the only way to really unload. And uh, I've been trying to do that ever since, and um, they're just getting so outrageous in price that even I'm getting appalled. <laughs> That's pretty bad. <laughs> um, I've been collecting, I don't know, six, six, seven years maybe. Um, it actually started because Billy came over to my place with an Atari and a stash of games. And me being petty, I was like, dude, where'd you get that? He's like, I found it at a thrift store. And I was like, I want games. <laughs> so it started there. And basically, um, I started with you know stuff I had growing up because like probably most everyone in this room the new console came out, I got rid of my old stuff and I regret it now, but um, you know, just started with the Mario Brothers and the Mike Tyson's punch outs and stuff like that and before I knew it I had 100 NES games and now I'm at like 1300 total games, so it's an addiction. Yeah, uh, for me personally it was, oh, it was like writer almost essentially, um, I was you know, hit a million dollar crisis in the 30s, and I was like, you know, I, I miss playing like old school Mario's and stuff like that. So I downloaded all the ROMs, and uh, I still actually have them. But I was like, you know what? It's not the same thing. So I went on the eBay, actually, got a Nintendo and the NES and stuff, and I ended up getting an Atari and all this other stuff. And I got mainly only, mainly only focused on the games that I grew up with and I loved, but then it became an addiction, and I was like, you know what? I gotta have them all. <laughs> <laughs> I would argue that. I've always been collecting since I started playing because I never got rid of any of, got rid of any of my games, unless it happened without my knowledge, which did happen a lot. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> uh, but actually, like kind of getting into it and actively going out and seeking out places that have games, just whatever for me to just grab that I, whatever I didn't have. I probably started doing that in about probably about 2003 or so, I'd say. And that was just the simple stuff, like nearby game, use, uh, mom and pop game stores. Just a lot for, of uh, a lot of pawn shops back then, like when the this glory started. Days. Pawn shops, yeah. yes, a lot of them. You could go into a pawn shop and find anything for like a dollar. Yeah, yeah, that was those were the good old days. Um, <laughs> one of the, yeah, those days are over. Like I used to go to thrift stores and I would see twenty, thirty, forty games and get them for like twenty bucks. They they didn't care. They had no value, and really value. We'll get into that. In a little bit, but yeah. Today we live in an, an age where Goodwill looks up the prices. Right. It's um, Goodwill. Goodwill. Yeah. I used to be able to go to Goodwill once a week to pick up all my stuff, and then it went to once every three or four days, and then once a day. And now I don't find stuff at Goodwill. No. Yeah. It's and you won't. it's rough. Yeah, you won't. I mean, once in a while, sometimes maybe, but um, okay. So you guys all collect. Most of y'all. Um, I guess we don't really need to get into why you should start or what kind of collector you would be, but there are levels of collector. There's a collector who wants what, what just what they want to play, um, which usually graduates you to guys like me and Billy who just want everything we can get our hands on. That actually, that actually gives me a good question. What is everybody's main reason for wanting to collect? I'm materialistic. <laughs> there you go. Oh, that's a good reason. <laughs> uh, I've always said that, aside from just collecting games and just having a bunch of games, which is cool, because it's cool to have cool stuff. I've always said, like, actually getting games is basically getting a physical form of childhood memories that I've always had, because I've played so many of these games, and I have very distinct memories playing these, which is yeah. why I like having them, so I can always relive that, because the present sucks. Yeah, <laughs> um, it does. <laughs> uh, for me, um, I would say you know, sophisticated people, like smart people, they have a library of books in their house to look smart. Well, <laughs> nerds have a library of video games on yeah. their bookshelves to look smart. Um, no, like I, 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 like the, I love the idea of being able okay. to, like, any day particularly, just what Nintendo game do I want to yep. pull off the shelf now? And just having, like, a library, like a history of the NES on my wall, a history of Super Nintendo on my wall. And people are always, always saying, why do you even collect the bad games if they suck? I, sometimes I still play bad games. Like I put in Dash Galaxy and the Alien Asylum every once in a while just to piss myself off. Um, it's, a, it's, it's part of the NES's library. It's part of the console. It's part of, kind of the history of gaming. It's part of gaming general. history, yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. So it's, I have a museum in my room. It's I like saying, it's cool. why do people watch bad movies? Because you can still get enjoyment out of bad movies you just like exactly. you would out of bad games. Exactly. Yep, that's so true. So, no, go ahead. 
Also, let it be known that Billy does not own any books. Oh, not true. I own a lot of paranormal books. I was just about to say, <laughs> all his books are either paranormal or alien related. Oh, okay. Sorry. What Communion. was the question we were yeah, What was in? the question? Uh, why, why do you want to collect? Why do we want oh, to collect? Oh, well, I have a collection. You, you guys kind of summed it up, you know, and me, like, I, I can be, I'm not like OCD to the point where like I'm, I walk into a room and I got to flip the light switch, you know, 13 times before I can go any further. But if I have one, I want them all, you know, so. I'm kind of like that way on Blu-ray sets. Even if like there's one particular movie that sucks, I still have to have the whole set. Right. Right. Exactly. Like Star Trek 5. Star Trek 5 sucks, but I still have to have Star Trek 5 because. Right. There's a gap there between four and six. <laughs> well, it's like even even with modern gaming, you know, I, if I put in a game, you know, you got achievements, you got trophies, you unlock. I want to get, I want the platinum. Like if I'm playing on PlayStation, I have to get every single trophy on there. So it's kind of the same thing, I guess. I will say that there's nothing wrong with uh, that not being your collecting goal, because that that was my collecting goal for a long time, and I would just buy and buy and buy. And I mean, I've got somewhere between two and three thousand games, I think, right now. I have this thing where I can't sell anything. Uh, I'm just OCD like that. But what I have done recently is I looked at my game room and I said, wow, like, this is ridiculous. No, it, it really, dude, I can't even, like, I, I have no room on my shelves. Yeah. He, and I need more shelves, but I have no room for the shelves. Exactly. So I got stuff piling up, like, games in front of games in front yeah. of games on my shelves. I so still have you, games on my floor in front of my shelves. You guys saw them. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. still just laying there. They've been laying there since October. Yeah. I, I could speak for this guy. Like, his living room looks like his game room threw up <laughs> into the living room. <laughs> it, it looks like 1985 through 92 just puked all over my apartment. But, no, like, I got a, a, a tech and arcade cabinet in my living room. I've got a uh, PS3 and an Xbox 360, the demo units from GameStop, in my living room because... I had nowhere else to put them. So. Well, I mean, to me, I don't, I don't know if you are like this, but it's just not necessarily having to own the games. It's having the ability to just play those games. Because um, me and you talked about this last night. We did. That whenever I was younger, my family didn't have a lot of money. So it's like getting a regular Nintendo was me and my brothers busting ass to basically buy one used of course mm -hmm. and then going and renting games yeah and so i mean it's just getting I'm like oh yeah my buddy jay had that one and i never got to play it and now it's kind of like a lot of those games you can go back and get it for a reasonable price if you know they're not idiots basically <laughs> about how idiots. much it, yeah. yeah or if they don't care we've run into a lot of uh, not a lot of sellers that they know that there's some value in games, and like they don't care. Those are the best kind of like the la the lady we bought that whole tub of games for twenty dollars. She literally didn't care. Yeah. She was like, "I just want it out of my way." You know, and like like Ryder was just saying, you know, not a lot of money. You know, me neither. We we would get a Nintendo, and my mom would be like, "This is for all six of y'all. Here you go. It's a cheap way out." So. You know, birthdays, we might get a game or, uh, you know, Christmas, stuff like that. I might have had, like, 30 NES games. Now I'm at, like, 520, you know. So my son, when I first took the Nintendo up in his room, he came over that following weekend. He was like, yo, Dad, what's that? I'm like, what's what? He's like, that gray box in my room. I'm like, well, that's a Nintendo. And he gave me this stupid look, and he's like, that's not a Nintendo because his, his version of a Nintendo is a Wii. I'm like, no, dude, this, is, this came out, I was about your age when this, this one came out. And he's like, you got any games on it? Can I play it? And I'm like, yeah, come here. I was like, pick any one of those. And his eyes got this big. And he's like, really? I'm like, yes. So we just, you know, he'll come over and grab like a stack of games. Let's go play. You know, he likes Qbert, Donkey Kong, Mario Brothers, all the classics. Um, I think it's funny because this is a kid who will, who will play like, the Force Unleashed 2 on PlayStation 3 and be like badass at it and then put in Mario Brothers and die in the first world and be like, this game sucks. I'm like, no, you just suck at this game. It's <laughs> so. That kind of reminds me of another kind of a reason why I collect now because as a kid, I was always going through my head, what would it be like to own all these games? Because I was looking at Nintendo Power and see what was coming out or like wow. the Game Pro and they'll see Funko Land and then list all the games and train them. What would it be like to own all those games? Maybe one day. Maybe one day. Maybe. So these are all good reasons to start collecting. Let's talk about bad reasons to start collecting. If you're, if you're getting into collecting to make money, you're not a collector. 
and that is the wrong reason to get into this hobby. Especially because, now. Especially right now because the prices are so inflated. I'm, I'm ready for it to tank. I'm ready for the hobby to just like take a nosedive because you, you, then, really, you really think it's going to just totally nosedive or do you think it's going to be like a generational thing? Um, I think it would not, not completely, but probably a generational thing, you know, cause like for me, you know, like my old school is Atari, NES, Super Nintendo Genesis, right. um, PlayStation, PS2, you know, Nintendo 64. I was an adult already when those right. came out. So where, yes, that is becoming retro, it's not that that childhood link like you know billy said or uh, jared said earlier you know so i'm ready for i guess the nes to start you know oh, yeah nose diving and people are like well your game's gonna be worthless i'm like well i'm not getting them because they're worth anything you know because when i was buying them they were worthless you know and really what's the worth of the the value of a game what someone's willing to pay i guess no i don't keep track up on the uh like the the value of like the atari system but wasn't there a time where it was um, a lot more sought after and a lot higher yeah. price so we've kind of seen we've kind of seen that curve on the atari start to dive down I, I think we're already seeing it on the nes yeah, shifted to yeah nintendo. Because, i mean look at super nintendo super. games i think super nintendo's coming down as well personally yeah. so and nintendo 64 is coming up but i don't know that that's going to last that long and 64 PS1, is getting ridiculous. PS, PS2 might wind up having a, an increase. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I have this thing about disc-based games because they have a shelf life, no matter how well you take care yeah, of them. Yeah, they do. And, well, carts last a lot longer than a disc. Um, and I kind of feel like disc-based media in general, because of the lower shelf life, will probably never hit a peak. I think it's going to be fairly flat until the things just don't work anymore. And with the disc-based games, I mean, you can emulate PS2 games on your computer at this point. So in five years, you can do PS3, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that might be, I mean, because to me personally, I do collect disc-based games because there is some nostalgia built into it. But I would rather play a cart-based game on an old-school CRT monitor with a controller. Once you start getting to PS2 and up, eh, I mean... I, if I wanted to emulate it, I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily have a problem doing it with a disc-based game. So going back to how we're talking about the NES and the Super NES, just seem to they're going up together, essentially. Of right. course, NES went up first, and then Super Nintendo went up right behind it. I think a lot has to do with the fact that with Atari and everything, you didn't have like too many games that had sequels. Now with Regular Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, you've got Mega Man, Final Fantasy, all that Bomber stuff. Man, all that, yeah. And it's kind of like you got people going back and wanting every one of them. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, getting to some, maybe some, some tips right here. We're talking about like NES and, and Super Nintendo has just been spiking up, up, up the price. Um, if you're collecting, one thing that I'm trying to do right now with like, I'm trying to be a ahead of the curve with Nintendo 64. So... All the a lot of the rare games I have, you know, I basically just need to fill in gaps with comments. I've got the sculptors cut, you know. I've got. I think I'm missing like Worms Armageddon, and um, that might be it for like super rare stuff. But all the blockbuster exclusives, all that stuff, I've got them all. So, which I like because that that'll that probably be, probably be the next one. Yeah, and just if you are interested in collecting for the 64, check out the blockbuster exclusives because some of them are still extremely reasonable. Like extremely reasonable. You know what, reasonable. actually, like Stunt Racer. They, yeah, what's that, like 35, 25, 35 dollars? Yeah, you can get it for cheaper all over the place yeah. too. I mean, yeah, and like Blitz, the Blitz Special Edition. I picked like that. that up for a buck recently. Exactly. So there are definitely still, still deals to be right. had. Um, you just kind of have to be diligent and do your research. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, um, you know, even stuff like, uh, Go to GameStop because right now they're starting to to you know fire sell all of their old PlayStation 2 stuff and their their Wii stuff and whatnot like that. 10, 15 years down the road, you know Wii is going to be retro. Wii, yeah. Wii is you can get super super cheap right if, now. If at there are, if there are games on the Wii that you were really looking into getting and uh, they're hard to find, get them now. It, it may not make it past the crash though. We I mean the, we may see the peak in the next year or so for Wii just because of where retro is right now and then it levels out and I mean if the next 
form of system goes to download only anyways, and there's no I hope it media, does not. I hope there's, it doesn't. The collecting's going to be gone as far as that goes in the generations coming up, and no one's going to care. Well, and it's almost like, I mean, who up here is going to really collect for the PS4 or the Xbox One? I'm not. I, I'm not thinking about that, but, you know, I mean... But now we don't. We we're, we kind of collect now because I don't trade my games in now anymore. Yeah, I don't need PS3 right, and Wii right. and all I don't that. Either. I used to all the time. I'd go to, if I needed a game on games. A new game came out. Whatever. What we do? We take our games and get screwed by GameStop by getting a couple of bucks for each one. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. do that anymore. I stopped. I stopped doing that uh, in PS2 days because, I mean, yeah, like probably everybody, this new game came out. Came out, and I'm like, okay, I either buy this game or I don't eat. I got this shelf full of games, let me take them in and, and get rid of them. And one day I looked at my shelf and I had like two PlayStation 2 games. And this is when the console was still hot, you know, in, in its, its heyday. And I was like, okay, I'm not, I, I can't just have nothing to play. But, but would you ever collect for the PS4? <sighs> Ask me that in 15 years. I know, right? <laughs> No, when you say when a good game finally comes, if a game finally comes out. Hey, hey Rezo Gun's awesome. It's a lot weirder for collecting for PS4, or yeah. PS3, or yeah. Xbox 360, or Xbox One because gaming now has become such a larger industry than it ever was before. Like, even PS2 is pretty big, but it still had rare games on there. But these current gen consoles and the last gen with 360 and PS3 were, had so many units out there and so many people are buying it that there really isn't a whole lot of rare stuff rare, for it. Yeah, there are know. some, don't get me wrong, there are some, but it's also so readily available. I mean, you always hear Call of Duty selling a billion copies, but, not, but no one really pays attention to the Tales of Zillia Collector's Edition, which only has 18,000 available. Right. So, it's like, uh, there are collectible things on there, but I don't, I don't really foresee anyone saying, like, I'm going to have every PS3 game. <laughs> Downloads, too. Well, it's almost like <laughs> some, some, of the, some of the CEs have gotten so ridiculous, too. Like, Dark Souls is probably my favorite series that's been released in, I don't know, 15 Praise years. The What's up? Praise the sun. Exactly. Praise the sun. And uh, I didn't buy the CE. I mean, I, I got the day one pre-order steel case, mm -hmm. and I'm happy with that. And I'm a collector. I've spent whatever for collector's editions in the past, but it's almost like... It's not that limited if I could still get on Amazon today and buy one. Yeah, exactly. You know and see, I mean? that, that's the thing and with it, a it's, lot. It's Go all ahead. turned into publicity. And it's not... It's yeah, it's a marketing ploy. Collector's editions don't matter. I mean, what was that? What was the 3DS game that came out recently? Uh, it was like a One Piece where they had like a limited oh, run. Yeah. 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 And I mean, I, I picked that up because it's a numbered limited edition run. Um, so I took a chance on it. I think it's a good, good set. I mean, I'm, if they're numbered, they're worth picking up. Yeah. As long as the number is not like one out of 200,000 or something. Right. Well, even then, it's, it's, it's like 13,800 or something like that. I mean, it was fairly thing. limited. So they got, they just everywhere. I mean, they're tripping over them at the flea markets. They're yeah. everywhere. So it's, it's almost now, I mean, if you are interested in collecting for PS3 or Xbox, I mean, you really have to be careful and do your research. I mean, don't, don't go into a store and say, oh, that's a collector's edition for Gears of War 3. Go on Amazon and see if you can buy one new for the same price because it's a legitimate possibility at this point in the game. Well, on, to on top of that, all the new collector's editions are. Uh, <laughs> golly. Help you out, Ryder. I appreciate you. Uh, all the collector's editions that are coming out on PS3, uh, Xbox, uh, even the new stuff, one thing that's always in them is here's this downloadable content that you can only get with this game. So. That. What that makes for collecting, like it's not like the statues and stuff, because the statues that they come out with are pretty cool looking, to say the least. Yeah, the but, aliens, colonial marines, that was the only good thing in the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what's that down to now? Like 20 bucks? Because they uh, have a, yeah. they're everywhere. Yeah. And, well, yeah. the thing is, though, what my point is, is that if you're out collecting for PS3, a lot of the times there's no way to tell if that downloadable content is even still downloadable. And it's true. of course in the future, they're gonna shut down those servers that have all that info yep. on it anyway. And that's, that's a good, another good point of collecting for the, these newer generations is because a lot of these games are focused around multiplayer now. In 10 years, that ain't gonna matter. What do you guys think about the way gaming is now as far as the only games being first person shooters and uh, okay. Madden? <laughs> Hang on. 
Here, here's my little rant. It's for you. I think I think game developers, companies, the, the people making the games are lazy today. They're putting out half-assed products because they know in a week they can release a patch. Now back in the day, you put out a good game and you got it, you earned your reputation. If you put out a shit, sorry, a crappy game, then you had a crappy reputation. You know, they, they had to work harder to make sure that game did not have the glitches and the bugs and everything else in it. Now it's just, oh, let's just rush this out to make money, money, money. And Battlefield oh, 4. Battlefield 4, exactly. I, mean, I, I started the campaign twice on that, and just like that, for no reason, my, my, my save file was just gone. Just disappeared. I, I, didn't, I didn't pick up the game or play the game for another like four months. And I finally put it back in and the patch downloaded. Now, on, on one hand, it's cool that they can do that. But on the other hand, stop being a lazy sack lunch and do your job. You know what I mean? Like, just, just I mean, give us. One, one caveat to that, though, is is it the developer? Do you really think they want to put something out, or is it the people? Is it the publishers? Is is it the is it the is it the whole marketing train that we're going to release this game on this day? We're going to get all this pumped up, and we don't want you know we have to release it now no matter what because well, I kind see, of feel like that's that, happened. That's my point, though, is if the game's not ready, don't release it. When Rockstar delays a game. I'm completely okay with it because they're going to try to make that game as good as they possibly can before it, it gets into our hands. Now, when, when GTA 5 came out, the servers crashed, the online and all that. But when you got 17 quadrillion people trying to go online and play the game all at one time, that's going to happen. You know, the, I mean, the damn game made, what, a billion dollars in the first seven days. Okay, so if a company like Rockstar is like, hey, I know we said this was coming out on this day. Uh, we got to push it back six months. Take your time. Because you're gonna give me a better product from from like you know the box, right. and not have to sit there install the game for 20 minutes and then oh immediately there's a patch. Why is there a patch on day one release on games? So what, what you're happen. saying is uh, LJN was about 20 years too early. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> so uh, we're probably getting a little too off subject yeah, here. To get just, the panel back yeah. to collecting. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well let's uh, bring it back. On the subject of actually modern day collecting, have you guys uh, actually ever purchased two copies of something that just came out so you could have one like kind of stored safely away? The last time I did that was the the Mario All Stars crap release that came out on the Wii. On the Wii, yeah. yeah. That piece of junk. That's actually a good question. Um, not with modern stuff, but if I find a sealed game, NES, Super Nintendo, 64, whatever, I will not open it. Oh, I will yeah. try to find a loose copy that I can play. Even if I find a box game, I, I have a hard time, you know, like, I got Mike Tyson's Punch-Out box, and I don't have a loose copy, so... I don't want to take that Mike Tyson out of the box. Because every time you use that box, that box degrades. Exactly. <laughs> every time you open it, close it, the manual gets messed up, yeah. folded, bent, blah, blah, blah. See, this is where the OCD and, yeah. and stuff comes but in. This is why so, you shouldn't collect. Yeah. But like, I got, also, even, even if it's a crappy game like Anticipation on NES, okay? I got that com factory sealed still. It's worth like 10, probably cents. <laughs> <laughs> but I still have a loose one sitting on my shelf that if I do want to play it, Take it out, put it in. But I mean, I think it's important too. It really depends on what your goal is collecting. If you're collecting to have a playable library only, then I wouldn't recommend getting complete games if you're worried about bending the box or using the manual. Because I mean, I, I'm like that too. I mean, I won't play something because I'm like, is it worth pulling it out of everything and messing it up? And that's really annoying. And so yeah. if that's your, if your goal is to have a museum full of pristine objects that you don't plan on playing, then that's fine. But if you just want to collect to play, I mean, I wouldn't buy a cart with the label ripped off to play it, but I'm also not going to buy, a, you know, a mint Castlevania X if I don't, you know, to play, basically. Right. Yeah, well, there's a difference between having a collection of games you want to play and a collection of trophies. Just so, to show off and flex your... Money muscles, I guess. I don't know what else you would call it. So for me, a big, a big deal for me is is that the games. I know a lot of y'all and probably most of y'all out there collect the boxes because, uh, like David here, he just got his um, box for his Mega Man Five, which is awesome. Now he's got it one through six completely boxed, which is awesome. Uh, for me, if I have a box, like my Castlevania Xbox, I want a pristine one just because it's Castlevania. I love Castlevania, and I love that shirt because it kind of throws a thumbs up for it. But 
the big deal is is that at the end of the day, I don't care too much about my boxes. Um, if it's old and a little bit rips off, I don't care because I'm getting the game out to play it. You know, I'm not I'm not going to sell the stuff unless if I absolutely have to um, for like my family, which we talked about. Yeah, that we've too. we've all been there. I mean. You know, you're young, or I guess most of y'all went to college. Look at me. But like I said, it's okay. I got this game I can play or just sit there on my shelf or I starve. So, man, let me take this stuff to the uh, pawn shop or something. Me, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like stuck in the middle, I guess, because I love collecting boxes um, because I love the box. I love the artwork. To me, it's part of the experience. If, if, or otherwise, why not just have the, the ROM? I mean, you know, it's all part of the package of, of owning that, you know, piece of history like I was talking about earlier. But me personally, I take the games out, put them up on the shelf, and most of my boxes are empty boxes, and I just have them, you know, stacked up. So uh, I already have most of the games I want. I don't buy games that I'm not going to play. Like Anticipation, I would never own that because I'm not going to play that. <laughs> Anticipation is actually kind of fun when, is it? when it, you're no, like, not. just. I, uh, well, no, no, no. Okay, remember when we were talking about playing bad games just because you get something out of them? Yeah, but it's, it's just, there's also bad, bad. And excruciatingly painful. Bad, bad. <laughs> it's like playing Taboo the Sixth Sense. There's no fun out of it. It's like, what? what is that? What? Is, oh, that's not that. Come on. If I didn't collect boxes and manuals at this point, I wouldn't have anything to collect because. There's like, you know, two games left for Nintendo that I want, and I'm not going to find them. It's like Lil' Samson and, you know, stadium events, which I had in my house for about three days, which was fun, but whatever. Uh, but, but that's what I like, you know, and, and me, I, I like, there's a lot of games on my shelf I've never played for. I like for the very first time experiencing it for the first time. What is this game about? What the hell is it? Is still, you know, uh, the Shatterhand? I've never played that before. Oh, actually, this is awesome, you know? Yeah, I like that See, experience. And I've, I've had those games. There was a time when I had like 700 Nintendo games, and I I should have been on the episode of Hoarders probably. Oh, look my at garage me. was so bad, <laughs> and I I finally was like, this is ridiculous. I don't need all this, and I kept having to move. You know, I I got done with college, and it was time to go around, and I didn't have the funds to pay to move my collection. I didn't have the energy or the strength or any of that stuff. So I started selling it off, and I realized I really just wanted the games I want to play, and that's it. Yeah. So boxes and manuals are what I collect now, basically, just so that I stay in the hobby for the most part. There's nothing. I there's think, nothing wrong with that, you know. Like I said earlier, like I guess your lower tier and not as serious collector is just going to get what they want. And for you, you got everything you want for the most part. Now you just want to get the boxes, and manuals to to make it. A Everybody does things differently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which, if you want to go hardcore into collecting boxes and manuals, is where it's at. Because one that exponentially increases the value of whatever item it is you have and two those are a lot harder to find than the actual games especially in good condition especially condition, condition is a crazy thing with all that stuff and yeah. upgrades you can just can i could collect zelda boxes for the rest of my life yeah. trying to find the perfect one right yeah you know yeah. Not, not only that though oh, yeah, I've, I've, re I've repurchased games because the label was slightly better than what i had before i think we've all done that actually yeah, yeah. we have yes yeah, yeah. i replaced a mike grades. tyson's punch out which if anyone has like a really good copy of vice project doom mine's label is coming off just a little bit in the corner and i see just a little bit of gray underneath it and it kills me inside yeah, my, my Flintstones is surprised Dinosaur Peak has a little line going through the top label. You can give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. Um, no, but getting, getting, staying on the subject of boxes and manuals, don't not buy a game if you're looking for it complete in box and you see it loose because later on down the road you will see the manual, you will see the box. I've yep. completed, you know, I, I guess buffet. a set, like Bible Buffet, exactly. I had the game and... By itself, it's like a $50 game, okay? I ran across the box, the manual, the answer book, and it had the dust sleeve that, that what's the company? Color Dreams, is that right? Tree. Wisdom Tree, thank you. Same thing. In, same thing, right. Anyways, they, the dust sleeve is not the, the normal black one. It's like blue. It has Noah's Ark on it, whatever. But to, to the lady that had it at, the, at the, the vendor, she's like, the game's not in there. And I knew I had the game already. I'm like, well, will you sell me just the box? She's like, yeah. I was like, how much? She's two bucks. <laughs> okay, here you go. So people like that, they don't look at it like we do. You know, someone sold me a, a Super Nintendo box for $15. You know, and a Super Nintendo box is, what's that going for now? Over 100 120 now? Something like that? Yeah. 
You put a Super Nintendo in it, boom, instantly the value of your stuff gets, you know, jacked up times three sometimes. Like that Bible Buffet, that was $50, now completing box worth 150 bucks. I got the box manual, everything for $2. So. That's nice. Systems are another good subject to start on. If you yeah. can pick up a system, even if it doesn't have games, you can turn around, say you pay 10 bucks for it, you can sell it for 50 or trade it or do whatever, and that's... See, People that's pass another, systems that's up. I, I, I got a question real quick. How much time do we have? 20. We got 20 minutes or are we uh, running? Probably about three. Uh, 20. 20, okay. Yeah, we, we can go three over minutes. a tad, but not much. Yeah, yeah, we could sit here for 10 hours doing this, but okay, so let's go over like some tips. Let's get more into the tips so instead of just stories. And do, do, do we, does anyone have questions that they want to ask? One person? All right, All right. So ask we don't, it. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that's you. Right there. Hey, Superman. 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 Super, boy. Super, Super boy. boy. Sorry. Sorry. Dreaded buying? Oh, Retreat of right. two. Aliens, Colonial Marines. <laughs> <laughs> How second that? Um, I don't. I don't know because I usually no. I go through a lot of thought process before I buy a game, but I would say the. Well, the recently I've been really disappointed in Battlefield 4, like we were just talking about, because I'm a huge Battlefield fan, I always have been, and I, I just I encountered so many errors and so, so much crap in that oh. game. It's just like, why did I even spend the money on it? I should have actually, you know, heard what people were talking about and just held my money. So, I've never bought a game and played it and been like, damn it, I want my sixty dollars back. But I have had games where it's like that wasn't worth sixty bucks. So, yeah, a lot of those, a lot of those. I actually have two. Uh, the first one was Cheatham in two. I, I put it in. I got it about ten years ago, not really knowing what was going on, and it, it just kind of quit working. <laughs> and then the other one was Panzer Dragoon Saga. And uh, Jonathan, my little brother, was with me. I had just gotten my wisdom teeth pulled, and so I was high on whatever they give you. And they made up a language in that game, and I start playing it, and I'm like what on earth is what is going on I, this is crap so i took it out and i sold it on ebay and i, got, I did pretty well with it i think i paid like three dollars for it but uh i kind of regret selling it but at the same time i kind of regret playing it because i would have <laughs> kept it if i hadn't played it probably um yes Do we want to tell them the secret? Okay, you, the, 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 that's, secret that's actually a good question. Um, uh, well, we had just asked that everyone stops rolling their cameras right now. Yeah, we're going to develop some secrets. Okay, first, does anyone live in Dallas, Fort Worth? Anyone around here? No? Okay, all right, we're clear. We'll, we'll tell you. We're good, we're good. We, we will tell you then. Um, no, well, first of all, if you're collecting um, persistence, I guess, consistency, like you said, every week, you know, I'll be driving, you know, around, around town for work. I drive a lot. And I'll see a, a thrift store or a pawn shop or something that I've gone into a thousand times, but I can't, I can't not like pull over. I have to. You have to. You have to. You keep have going. to. Right. Because what if the, the, it'll be the day I don't pull over that someone posts on like RGS, look what I found. It'll be like a nine trillion dollar, like an NWC or something. Be like, where'd you get it? Oh, Joe's pawn shop in Irving. Like, damn it. I've gone to, I've gone to this Goodwill so many times. They've had nothing. I just have it on a whim. Just go in there one day. They had Megman X2. So, and you know what the best advice I can give you? You just mentioned garage, garage sales. This is the best advice in the world right here. Take notes. Okay. <laughs> Don't go to a garage sale if they're advertising games on Craigslist. Just don't do it. Right. And what you want to do is you go to just random garage sales that you see on Science 4 and ask them. They may not have games out there, but ask them. That's one of my biggest, ask. like people always ask me, what, you know, give me some advice, this and that. And my biggest thing, two things really. One, just because you don't see it doesn't mean it isn't there. Always ask. Even if, if, they, if you go to a flea market or if you go, do go to, to a garage sale and they got a couple of games, hey, do you have any more? Do you have anything else? And if you bought stuff, just show them because they may not know what you're talking we about. We've got gotten so like this. much stuff. Right. Asking. If you yeah. just ask, they'll be like, you know what? Hang on a second. Come back with this box full of video games. And the second thing is never pay retail. The way I see it, the person selling the game needs my money more than I need that game. So I've walked away over like a buck because a, a flea market vendor didn't want to budge. I'll be like, later, bitch. I'm out. I don't, I don't care. But I'm cheap, too, so. 
what one, one thing that I would say is that if you're a garage seller um, going to get knickknacks for your house and stuff, and you're looking for games at the same time, but perfect. One, uh, like I collect stuff for my daughter, but on Facebook, there's a bunch of like different like Facebook garage sale sites and stuff like that. And a lot of the time in the colony where I live, they just put like, hey, we're having a garage sale here. Here's my phone number if you have any questions. Call them up. Hey, you got any video games and so on and so forth. I mean, also Craigslist. Uh, of course, don't look in the video game section unless if it's like you come across one and it's like, oh, I got these old Nintendo games. You go buy and check them out, you know. But, <laughs> but if you don't answer that ad in the first five minutes, forget about it. Well, on Craigslist, there's the yard sale or the garage sale. And just put what I do, go to garage sale, and then I just type in the colony. Um, and, of course, a whole list comes down. You can kind of look through it. And most of the times, why they put, like, it's just... Colony where is the city he lives in? Yeah, Oregon. yeah, the Colony, Texas. Um, they usually just put like electronics, and so if they leave a phone number, call them. If not, go by. One one thing that I've done a lot of times is I'll I'll actually search Craigslist for like Atari or Sega. Nobody buys Atari or Sega mm -hmm. stuff, so I'll email them and be like, Hey, do you have any Nintendo stuff too that you didn't list? And I've found a lot of great things that way. Something else you can do, we're talking about Craigslist. Um, I, I don't usually go on it anymore. There was a time when I could buy, you know, 100 games for $2 total. Uh, it's not that way. But it, it, and it's flooded with, I buy games, I buy games, I buy games. Yeah, Those guys yeah. are buying games because they're selling the games. So contact these people and say, hey, what, you got anything for sale? You know, I've done that, texted them, you got anything for sale? No, I buy stuff. Well, if you're, I know you're selling it, what do you got? Well, here, here's a list. So... Want to hear a funny Craigslist story? Yes, always. Uh, I had a, a Craigslist garage sale uh, list that was really close by to me saying, oh, tomorrow I'm having this garage sale. There's a bunch of video game stuff. And then like at the bottom, he said, if you bring beer, you'll get a discount. So what I did was that night, the night before the garage sale, I went to his house with beer and knocked on the door. Oh, you're one of them guys. And he, he looked through the people, and he's like, can I help you? And I pulled it up, held out the beer, and he's like, you're selling stuff? And he laughed, and he, and he let me in and let me look at all of his stuff before the actual garage sale. So sometimes it doesn't hurt to be a little aggressive with it, or even just kind of contact them and just kind of say, you know, what can I do to get a leg up on it? Did you get anything? Was it worth the beer? No, it was not. Did, did you have it? <laughs> I got like $20 worth of beer, and I think I walked out with like five Atari games. It was, wow. It was, it's One a total thing, plus. Like, it, you, collect, you kept around and saying, more stuff's coming tomorrow. Dude, show up back tomorrow. I'll, I'll give you first first pick. And I was like, deal. So I showed up back at 6 a.m. And of course, as I was going through the boxes of his new stuff, which was all garbage, uh, probably about 8 to 10 people all showed up wanting his video game things because that's what he listed. One yeah. guy in particular said, I want all your nin old Nintendo. No. And the dude was like 50. So I was like, you just... He's clearly a reseller, like just looking for clearly, anything you get yeah. and get out of there. I mean, you know, and we talk about resellers, blah, 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 on the show all the time. Blah, blah, blah. If yeah. you're fair with your prices, you're cool with us, you know? Yeah, and that's actually what I'm doing because I, I have, like, you guys too, we all have like doubles. Sometimes mm -hmm. we just get doubles or exactly. multiple copies of what we have. So then I take them to conventions like this and I'll mm -hmm. sell them for a far more reasonable price than you'll ever see it anywhere online or any other convention. All, all collectors resell. Yeah. <laughs> that being said, that? if you're looking for any particularly rare games, come by my booth where you can sign some. <laughs> He's got uh, a really uh, Metal Warriors. Uh, anyone? Metal Warriors, uh, Mega Man X3, uh, Fantasy go. Star 2. What? Uh, that's actually why I'm selling my extra copy because I got a complete box Mega Man X3. You son of a... Hi. <laughs> Shaq Fu in the box. I got the. I, I would. I would buy that for a reasonable price. Why not? I got a box Genesis Shaq Fu. So yeah. yes. <laughs> Do I now? Superman sixty four. Best game ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. uh, you know what? No, the worst game on NES is Dash Galaxy. I stick by that. Worst game on NES is totally rad. I gotta play that game. I've had it a couple times. I'm just like, eh, I gotta see what you're talking about. That, that pain. What, you're saying you need to play it? Yeah. I'm you do, do play it. Seriously. It's like you can find it for a buck somewhere. Yeah. And believe me, it's not worth that. 
Are there any other uh, general hunting tips that we can kind of head out on? Because I know like a lot of places we always kind of say garage sales, flea markets are always the best because a lot of people are just trying to get rid of all the junk they have in their house. Well, yeah. You know? And they just, instead of doing a garage sale, they go where they know a bunch of people are. So I've, I've got some really cheap stuff there. I got uh, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2 on PlayStation 2. Beautiful condition, like $50 game, got it for two bucks. Just because the lady was trying to get rid of it. Uh, flea markets are always, and there there are probably a lot more than you realize. Like I found out there's one just a few miles north from me that I didn't even know existed until like four weeks ago. Going, um, going back to garage sales, for as many that are that are listed in on Craigslist, there's like ten times that are not. Yeah. Now I know it takes more time, it takes more gas, and we know all about that. But drive around. Just drive around close to your house, your home, whatever, yep. you know. And, you know, we live, we got, like, Dallas, we got Fort Worth, and 9,000 cities in between. So we're lucky. That you know, one, that lives one. Up there lucky. He lives in Houston. He's lucky. He's got a lot of a lot of real estate to cover out there. So where there is a ton of competition, you know, these guys are looking on Craigslist. They're not going to be in Arlington, where I live, you know, looking, just driving the neighborhoods, looking, looking for garage sale signs. So, I mean, it's just... You gotta, or you could be creative and sneaky and post a false ad on Craigslist <laughs> and draw draw out everybody to the. There's <laughs> actually everybody go that. Put a picture of all your rarest game to like a fake address. <laughs> Let them find. Uh, it. we're not even joking. There's actually people that do that. Yeah, um, I've seen that oh, before. Really? Yeah, that really is. Um, it gets cutthroat. I mean, these people out there are like that. Um, my closing advice personally would be, um, and this is specifically for people just now getting into collecting, because most of you guys out there, you know, who have been doing it for a while already know, but don't overpay. Um, a lot of people who don't know any better in terms of price and what something should be worth uh, get taken oh. advantage of a lot. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of stores out there especially who will mark rare on something, and it's not Super rare. Mario Brothers 3. It's $40. Yeah. And if you don't know any better and you haven't been doing your research and you don't know your price, yes. and you're going to be taken advantage of. And these uh, places... Um, thrive on that and we've actually talked to people like that who and asked them why they do that and then their direct answer to us was because we can and because we, get we away can with it. someone will come in and buy it so so um, the, w when that happens it just encourages them to keep doing it and, and and you're feeding the you're feeding the trolls essentially yeah. is what you're similar doing. advice kind of building off of that is that when you go to like a lot of mom and pop stores or flea markets or whatever and someone's selling something for whatever price you can talk them down mm -hmm. like just ask or say, hey, I've only got this on me. Would you do this? A lot of times they'll say yes because, like Jay said, they want the money more than they want having that game. Exactly. Even this know. very convention, like there's a lot of price stuff out there. You could probably talk a lot of them, us, down. Well, a lot of people out there have priced their stuff thinking people are going to. Yeah, pay. absolutely. Yeah. And so when you pay their immediate asking price, they're not expecting that. Well, yeah, sure. But it never hurts to ask for something that's Yeah, you know lower. what? The worst they can say is no. How many times have you heard no? And the, the key to that, though, and from my experience, don't look at them and say it's not worth that. No, 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 yeah, no, 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 no. Don't, don't. You don't, don't play games. With, you don't play games. And don't be afraid. It's for them to say, well, that's what I want, and say, okay, I understand, and walk away. You're not going to get anywhere with anyone being rude. That's no, true. no, we we and, never. And you never know what? Do Hang that. on. And the flip side to that is, if you're selling, don't say, "Well, eBay, I can get." Then go sell your yeah. shit on eBay. Because any I'm, serious I'm walking collector, off at that point. any serious collector at that point, you lost all credit. Exactly. You be you be straight exactly. up with them. You be straight up with them. Don't play any games and just say, "This yeah. is what I want to pay." And if they want to sell it to you, so be it. If not, yeah, you, you know, don't if, you, pay if it, you're, you know. I found that if you're honest, <clears throat> something new for me, I guess, but. <laughs> no, I'm joking. If, if you're honest with people, I, I went to a, a yard sale and I didn't see any games. I asked the dude, hang on a second, comes back with a, a like a Kroger bag full of games, Nintendo, whatnot. He's like, so what's this stuff worth? I was like, well, I was like, do you know, a, a Nintendo selling probably 50 to 70 bucks in a store right now. I was like, so there's that. You know, I was like, and you got all these games. It was, you know, Tetris and Commando, a bunch of common stuff. And I was like, these games, you know, topping out probably five bucks each, you know. He goes, what would you pay for it? I'm like, me? <laughs> I was like, well, I got a Nintendo. I don't need it. I said, I got most of these games. I don't need them. I was like, I'd give you $20 for it all. He's like, take it. So one, you know, he, he didn't care. He knew that he could have taken that down to, to trying to think game over video games or something. And they'd have given him a Nintendo $50 credit on it. But he was just like, yeah, just take it. That, that was one last thing I wanted to touch on that we haven't really talked about is retail stores. And, uh, 
that you, you can get a bunch of doubles, a box of games like your Dash Galaxy that you don't want to play. You find them, you buy it, whatever. And you can take them in and you can build up store credit. Say you've got 50 bucks into something, you get $300. They have Bonk's Adventure. You exactly. just got yourself a really rare game and it costs you, you know, 50 bucks instead of 300 So And see, t typically those stores, because they're out there, the stores that overcharge that you just you walk in and you're like, oh, 15 bucks for Super Mario Duck Hunt? No, thank you. They're going to give you more for your 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 trade. You know, they're going to give you more than the guy down the road the system. who has the Super Mario it's, Brothers Duck yeah. Hunt for five bucks, which is where it should really should. It's like a two dollar game. Sixty million of them sold. That's ridiculous. But like David said, trade it in, trade it in, trade it in. Save your credit, and then you can buy that three hundred dollar game sitting there, and nothing has to really come out of your pocket. Another thing you can do is trade. I typically don't buy stuff I need. But if I run across something I know someone's looking for, and I can you get it cheap. Need. Huh? You said need. It didn't make any sense what you just said. I typically don't buy things I need. Okay, I, I don't, okay, let me put it another way. I typically don't buy stuff I already have. That's what I meant. But if I run across a game I know someone's looking for, and I get it cheap, I'll buy it and I'll trade it to them. And me, like the way I trade, we trade dollar for dollar. So if Greg has a $100 game I want, and it takes me 72 games to equal 100 bucks, I'm gonna give them 72 games, dollar for dollar, that's fair. Um, for example, Con Conker's, Conker's Bad Fur Day, what's that, like 70, 90 dollar game? Yep. Yeah. I found it for like 10 bucks at, at a flea market with the intent of trading it to a fellow collector because I knew he needed it. So, Another thing about stores too, and I've run this a lot, I've been to a lot of stores, um, don't be afraid to go up and ask the employees just straight up before you do this, like what percentage of the sale price am I actually gonna get if I trade it in? Um, and that might sound like something that they would never tell you and that might sound like they're gonna ban you from your store from asking, but most places don't mind letting you know because they're a business and it's not hard for you to find out a trade in value and then look at what they have it on the shelf. So it, they have no real, there's no real benefit to them to like make something up or to lie to you. And so, you know, before you take 300 games into trade in and waste all your time, you can probably get a pretty good judge of what you're going to get, and that can that can help you with your credibility at the store a little bit. So whenever they give you a price and you're mad, you don't throw a fit and uh, storm out. Uh, because I know a lot of people who run stores, and that's that's something that they have to deal with. And then you've established a bad relationship with the store when. If you have a good relationship with the store, they will call you whenever they get in what you're looking for. See, what, what you got to keep in mind, if you're doing a lot of trade-in stuff, you're not going to get what it's worth. If you want what it's worth, no. go to eBay. Yeah. Okay, these stores, the bottom line is stores are a business. They have to make money. They got a light bill, rent. They got employees they have to pay. So, obviously, if you take in you know, Mario 64 and they say, I'll give you 15 bucks for it, don't go, well, I can get $30 for eBay. Then list it on eBay. Don't waste their time. Don't waste your time. You know, you're just, you're not going to get what it's worth at a store, period, bottom line. All right, guys, we got to wrap this up. Yeah. I want to say something real quick. Um, as a tip, y'all said it before, being nice, it's, it gets you a lot further than where you'll end up being if, you know, being mean to someone or just being very blah if you will it's kind of like the spot that i go to that i really don't tell many people where it's at because i don't it's really untouched for the most part but they do not touch their uh regular nintendo so everything's a dollar for regular two dollars for super uh, then they start pricing everything past that so i got a box coleco vision i go in here and i talk to those women for you know an hour just chatting with them plus they're nice people you make a lot of good friends they sold me a, a box ColecoVision for, what what I tell you, like $50 or something like that? With, with, with a whole lot of games. That came, in all, $100 got me 32 Nintendo 64 games, a box Coleco, a box Coleco uh, roller controller, and a handful of regular Nintendo, a bunch of sealed you know PSP stuff. It, it's just be nice. And even with like us, you guys we're typically nice to each other because it's you're going to get the stuff that you want 
Clint's not nice. Oh, Clint. <laughs> Clint's yes, Clint. Clint's not nice. No, so. Clint's not nice. So. All right, guys. Uh, so, um, about it. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all for listening to us ramble for an hour. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.